Aaron, this last time I was here, I uh, you guys know this started looking at voters. What I've got here, uh, guys, is I've taken the uh, uh, Foley tracker, brought me a bit. You know, I was looking for another one to 3,000 hour range. Uh, after they grapple with home field tires, uh, I do have money out to you for up to a machine and even uh, uh, have the home field tires and the grapple and the accessory and the same thing the yeah. cost of new. Uh, I've got I got a bit of folders, I got three different tractors here from Murphy. Uh, the tractor I got from Foley's is a 930 EM. Uh, the road department has a 930 H. Okay, just the same load with different series. Uh, it's different series, so I'm not operating yet, but they can crawl under the ground. Uh, they go to Great Bend and drive a gear machine. And uh, what I did. What I did is these papers I'm hand, I handed out here to you. I've taken, uh, you didn't have to flip through all these. There are 16 pages. There are some of these have photographs and stuff, and uh, you got tech sheets, technicals, and options, and kind of going on. Um, I listed them all out. I've got them laid out in the order that they're listed. Um, if you want the photographs or you know, the way to look at the tech sheets, they can verify the cost of uh, the um, of the machines I looked at, um, I, for my application, I did a gear and super but they, for several reasons, uh, and these numbers you'll see here on here on the cost, this cost that you see here is the price of the trade, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, all the deers that are listed here, the three deers, and the cat. The cat comes with a grab cat ground. They're ready to just grab the ground and stuff. It's just right after that. But the deers do come also with the skin tilt. It's not full, it's about half. It does cover the entire transmission and rear drive shaft from axle through into the transmission. Where I've had most of my property, but it does cover that. Um, on a deer, I found that uh, in my application, the uh, being able to see around me is a big thing as to make sure it's looking up and, and uh, the visibility's got seen me before a blast. Um, and I, I, I really like the cooling system on a deer. They, I guess that was a they design they had. Uh, instead of stacking all your condensing cores together, your radiator, your air conditioner, your air conditioner, they're all stacked together. They put them out, box them out, put them out, and they have a reversal fan. Uh, if you're in good condition, you program the thing to keep on in 10 minutes, or whether you want it on, or every 20 minutes, and reverse it, blows in the cooling fan, blows in the radiator. Uh, <laughs> The cost difference is, as you can see, is quite a difference. Um, the cat does have a parallel lift system, which is nice, the way it lifts the bucket. Uh, but I don't do this well with most of my works down the road. The trade-in value on it is, you know, if, you'll, if you'll flip over to select the page, Got some figures here. This is uh, basically uh, cost to operate figures. Uh, I've got this company's, each company's service field rate and their shop rate uh, and trade allowance is the trade in difference in the, in the two machines. So, Murphy will give us 21000 for ours. Fully well, gives 15,000. 15,000. Now, if you uh, 
go down and look at these machines, uh, the difference price over here in the far column would be the difference price. What this is, the difference is between this machine versus the cat machine. Each one of the price differences is the difference between the uh, cat machine. Um, if you look at this very first one, uh, the cat and, and the deer, 524K, um, same year for the hours, and this machine's got 139 hours. And it's almost unheard of. Story on that machine is uh, a company bought brand new. Uh, the application they were using for did not fit. They, they just had the movability problems. And uh, so they took the brand new machine back to them, traded it for uh, Like I said, I've got the uh, text and make sure it's really good for the uh, That machine comes with. Uh, 20 to 25 or 5,000 hours. Um, that's full dog training, high dogs. The cat is out of the monkey. Uh, now, the difference, uh, the machine is, is uh, 145 days. Uh, some of these others are uh, 100, like the cat's 164. Uh, the machine I'm operating now is uh, 150 horse. If I end up going with a, one of the smaller horsepower deers, um, thirty to seven to eight thousand pound machine, we um, And the machine I have now, the horsepower and its capabilities do meet this one for what I do. The uh, hardest I ever put that machine to was on the bottom day. This machine, I would be about six years before I'm of operating the machine before I'm up to where these out of the mm -hmm. you know, My warranty would be up, but uh, you know, then I would be starting after my warranty up to where these machines, other machines are in the um, Another thing I wanted to point out, you know, whatever machine I end up with, we're going to have to come to and if you look to the back page, I've got cost, current cost on that. Now I check on the on the cat. Right now I've got probably two to three years, probably about two years of use stuff on the tires. It's on the machine. Okay. I check to see. I check the rims. See if, if I went with the cat. Those wheels would come off. Go on that machine. Hold the hammer, so 
that vision forward and vision back. Um, one advantage to, uh, you know, and, and you know, if, if these machines have, uh, you know, of course, I, the, I, I couldn't go actually go look at them and see the, the target jitters card on the photograph. But uh, if you got a machine that's got a half line tire, you don't want to put 9,000 off on a half line tire. Uh, one advantage to this 139 hour machine is those tires are very clean. The cost of that phone bill has gone up a quarter, 25 cents per pound since the last time I've done this car, so I've got listed out here tire price for a 20.5 and 25, and this course buys, but it's the cheapest little tire in the world. For 950 plus 75 dollars, and for this one, so it's 1,025 bucks per pound. Phone, it takes 1,120 pounds of phone, it's 2,246 dollars per pound. Total cost if you got to buy a full big car in the phone period is 8,000 uh, The cost savings we have, if we go with the, the higher warranty, the full model 2015 year is $4,100 and we have dollars and Kansas Land said, you know, whatever tires I bring, if there's like half life or whatever, it's probably the cost of it. Um, so I Machines since 2015 have had a, a tier four system in them. That's that is basically the way a tier four works. It's, it's like an EGR but on one car. It's the exhaust gas for circulation. Reburns it. Reburns your, your exhaust fumes from the air. Um, those machines 
pickups all that same way. Uh, you got to run that depth through the system. Uh, the 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 depth is pretty. I mean, it's, it's not very high cost of but, uh, but all the machines have it nowadays. Um, they do have a machine here that is a pre-death machine. That's a 2013 with 2177 miles. Um, it's I mean, I think the best choice would be going with a really little more, little hour, uh, more. And that, that more could work about two grand. Uh, How many hours? Now, I mean, you take the, the 139 hour 2018 machine, um, you know, we're going to be adding the 80 hours in the water. It's about 155,000. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and I, I, both companies have told me between the period of get the machine ready, processed, and Taking the tires off, getting the park cylinders off, using the work part of this work in the past, take the wheels off the machine because once you, we did it once, take the whole machine off, and then we start busting boards coming back on because all the way through. So, uh, but both companies will pull out and keep the machine from operating until it's turned into the wheel. Yeah, you'll add 44,000 pounds to that, but both of the tires. No, I mean, well, you you had uh, this is eleven thousand two hundred. No, it's one thousand pounds. Oh, that's one thousand. Four thousand. Okay, you got one extra one on that. That'd be two times. Yeah. See, mine says eleven thousand. Did I put another one on there? You're right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You're looking. You're looking at it. Oh, hell for pounds. Uh, I'm glad we cleared it up because that's the yeah, that has a lot of it. No, the uh, so what? How many hours did when you bought your last loader? Mm -hmm. The loader you currently have was '93. I mean, how old was it when you got it? How many hours did you have when you had it? No, that I don't recall. Okay. I'd have to go back and get the service records. Oh, that doesn't matter. And you got that from the road and brake too. Yes, my previous loader for that. Here's some photos of that machine. If you want to look at each and every machine, and I'll tell you, like, on this photograph here, this bucket will not come with that machine because uh, they're going to take that off and put a it'll have this bucket and grab that. Grab that. So the warning that's left on this is up to 5,000 hour or 2,000. Yeah, whichever comes first, about four be, more years. Yeah. Five more years. It'll be the year that I get first. Then you want to train it out. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I get the good out of everything. <laughs> yeah. I get to use a lot of money. Yeah, you get the good out of stuff. Yeah, I was sticker shocked with the. Uh, Treated, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, you're 
looking at Chair Division 1, 20,000 for her work, heart break repair, uh, other way, and that oxidizes the <coughs> Otherwise, it would probably be another person. But you know, given the economy of country cuts and budget cuts and all that, with, you know, I think the best to go with the uh, object and get that lower hour machine and be the route to I agree. I agree. It's about two hundred and thirty dollars an hour in depreciation from with that five twenty four K is brand new two hundred thousand. Let somebody else take that two hundred and thirty dollars an hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's a perfect deal for the brand new look of discount. Well, you're, you're looking at about 200 something, I mean, 200 plus. See what the promotion What you'd like to do would be the uh, 2018 524KL. Yes. Okay. I make a motion that we allow there to go for that purchase price. Allow Darren to buy the John Deere 524K 1111 uh, loader from Foley Equipment for $147,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it? Murphy. 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 $7,000 Do we need to go ahead and do the motion for allowing the phone to go tires? Yes. I'll make a motion to accept the bid for Kansas Land Tire, Kansas Land Tire and Park City to phone fill the motor tires for $8,984. Okay, we have a motion and a second to phone fill the tires on the new loader. John, your loader for $8,984. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, what will probably take place is look at the, uh, look at the machine and uh, you know, look at the service <coughs> uh, Once they deliver it, um, we don't need any down money to hold it. I just, I've got to sign an uh, intent to buy a contract. And once uh, the machine is delivered, then uh, they'll come up. Okay. So do we call them today and they'll get that back from the lease? Or? Yes. Then you have to take the wheels off and take the parts in. Yeah. So you'll be without a machine. You know, leave yourself. No, they, they'll leave. They'll leave. They'll leave. They'll leave. They'll leave. They'll leave. Okay. The machine will be so they just turn the gear in. I cannot be without a machine. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. You did a good you did job. You did a good job here. Well, thank you. Thank you. That gave more detail. You know, I think I'm just doing, you know, all hand doing the best for, for my budget. Like you said, he's always still doing his computer. All right. I can read that. <laughs> that guy was telling me, he said, you know, look at that. He said, you look at that. Well, he says, he says, if you're, he says, if you're operating the machine and your phone rings, he says, if you're programming all that, and you don't want to stop the you know, he says, my phone rings and I'm operating the machine. He says, if it's important, you know, I'll that. 
uh, <laughs> early message. But it was nice, you know, I mean, where I have vision in one eye. I mean, there's times, I mean, I've worked on that job. Because you never know. I mean, I've had people pull in and come back and have done it right behind you. And it's, that was the only modern function I think that's going to be for me. So yeah, you get the first of that thing. It gives you a wide view of what's behind you. And yeah, the buzzer will go off if you're too close. You know, that's, not, that's a good point. Yeah, the key key like also that that's not a key key key. Key. There's a bunch of keypads, but you get a question about that button. Next time we see him, they'll have Siri in there. He will. <laughs> they'll be all have that. Have the They'll be talking on the phone all the time on these two. I still have a phone for me. Yeah, I'll have one for really long. When it comes back, so it'll be good. Yeah. Fine. I think uh, once everything slows down, this. After fall harvest, but this winter, I think we need to kind of start getting serious about talking to some more with Calvin. Yes. I'd like to maybe start thinking about uh, whether we want to buy, try to buy ground, you know, to the south, where it runs on up against the highway 50, or straight back to the east. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion, I think it'd be better to go straight on back east, but. That might be something I can think about. Can't talk about it. Something else or something. No. So I just think if you got down there close to the blacktop, you have more complaint chances of trash rolling out on the road or something like that. Mm -hmm. Probably have to put up some kind of a bubble bar fence along there. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's kind of what's in that section of the floor right now. It's all the cold water with the wood land. But you got flatter, you got flatter plane for trench settlement and going inside.
it'll end up being yeah, we're going to do an hour to hour and 15 minute meeting, right? Like what he advised. <laughs> That's why I have penciled in. So. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Europe. 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 Europ. 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 They look at the sales ratios and all the procedures that we do, and then you're deemed that whether in compliance or out of compliance. Uh, it used to be if you was in compliance, you got a check a long time ago to make it very common. You got money? So now we just, yeah. Really? Yeah. It was part of the water. So, so now you just what? get a pat on the head. And, and a letter. And, and a letter. letter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we do get a letter. So, just to let you know everything. Okay. I typically don't say a lot about that because next year we could be out of control. Yeah. Right. And, and so just remember, yeah. I don't want to have, I don't want to say a lot about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those are somewhat in kind of an order. These here. That's cool. This is, okay. I wasn't sure, and I'm still not exactly sure how to, how to go about this with you guys. This is um, about our, our soils, our, our new soils that we receive. Um, and going to the very first page, this is a quick refresher for you guys. These are the soils in 2015 and 16 that caused us a problem in the uh, Cheney Water District when they re soil that part of the county. Um, so this was just the first page is just shows you the soils that changed at that time back in 2015 and 16 um, that caused a huge problem okay so we kind of requested you know over the years that we want this corrected okay it's correct <clears throat> It depends on how you look at it. Who are you talking to? <laughs> okay. This is, the second page written on like this, these are some of the changes, okay? For 2021, they did away with four soil types and added one new soil type, just to keep that simple for you. On the bottom, I went through, so I went through every soil type, and these are the soil types that was typically affected back in 15 and 16. So just kind of keep in mind, we for 2021, we have one new soil type and four of them are deleted. Okay? That'll help you right there. Over to the right on that bottom page, you're going to see, and we got something later on coming up. So we had a lot of acreage change soils. Okay? We had a lot of, it's going to be right at 100,000 acres is changing. Okay. So let's just go past that right now. Just kind of keep keep in mind. The next group of papers, this one here, and on the bottom it should say 10-7-2019, uh, and I have a circle. Mm -hmm. That was for 2020 soils. This is the 2020 soils that, that people were paying taxes on for 2020. This is the soils that we did the down, down low layer and matched up the soil types with the property lines and got all the acreage correct, okay? That's this one here. So if we go through that just a little bit, I think I have highlighted on you guys this. Because what's hard about this is you're gonna have to go from this one to the next one. I highlighted soil type 5935. Remember, that's one of the soil type that was deleted. Okay? Then the, I highlighted the other three soil types on the last page of this chart. So those, those, so those are the four that are deleted from 2020 to 2021, okay? Because when you look at the next set, you're not going to see these four soils because they're deleted, okay? And if you have room, I don't know if you have room, if you want to go to the next group, the date on the bottom of that is 7-15-2020. Um, 
as we go through and see what the first one was I have highlighted in the other. Okay, 5905, that was added. That's the new one, okay? It's, <clears throat> it's pretty ironic that we have one added soil for that very first year. I'm on 5905, it was added to, and we have 59,124 acres. That's a lot of acres to gain for a new soil type. It is. And if you have room to go to the very last page, this one here, and I have them color coded, the 59, we go to a different soil type. Yeah, 5905 is in yellow, okay? The 5935, that's below it in yellow, that's the soil, that's one of them that was deleted, okay? So all that acreage was moved up to 5905. So what they did is they corrected, remember, the soil. The soil unit yes. did away with the car wild. In the simple terms, the car wild is no longer in our district at all. In Kansas, probably. It's gone. Okay, so this is fixed, right? Thumbs up. Hold on. So they're doing away with 5935 and placing it in 5905? Yes. And the value of the 5935 is $64? And they're now saying it's 242. <laughs> That's when you do the yay. <laughs> That's correct. You go all the way over to the irrigation. If you want to read that one, then same columns. It was 234 dollars an acre, and it would jump to 485. Now, of course, this is the 2020 values. We don't have 2021 yet. That could change a little bit, but it's, it's giving you an idea of what's going to happen. Okay. Okay, so if you stay on this, which let's just stay on this last sheet there again because this got your attention now. Okay, the 6330, that was a car wall that caused everybody a lot of problems. That has been deleted. The 6330 had just over 46,000 acres. So that 46,000 acres was moved up to soil type 5961. And it's going to go on this uh, from $89 an acre for dry crops to about $185 an acre. Irrigation knows the kicker because we have a lot of irrigation that's sold out 6330. You still doing that? Yeah, I, that. I, I already saw it. So this is their way of fixing the car load because this is going to make it it went from bad to worse to worse for the farmer. But 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 what they did is. What they're saying is, and we kind of knew this, right? I mean, that the car wild, that soil that came up from Oklahoma, they, it, was, it was rated wrong. They actually fixed that rating back in 2015, 15 to 16 in the Cheney Water District. Well, now they fixed it in the rest of the districts. And they're saying that soil type produces much better than what they originally produced. But where we went ahead and implemented it when everybody else didn't. Only in the Cheney Water District. Only down south. Only down south. This, is going to hit. this will be Everybody. the Cheney Water District. Those people will now those people won't see the difference. The rest of the four fifths of the county will, will fill this. Which I'm saying it's over a hundred thousand acres. With the Carlisle the where they brought Carlisle was the six thirty or sixty three thirty, right? Yes. And so down south where it is eighty nine dollars an acre. It's not. It's at it's at soil type fifty nine sixty one already. Oh down there it is already up here. Yes. Okay. Yes. I thought you said though an acre but it's here it's fifty nine thousand. Well, when you add them all together, all the totals. All the totals. Because um, to remember, we had one new soil. We deleted four of them. We shifted some over, and some other soils changed a little bit, but it's not very much. So it's over In my opinion, right? That makes sense. Total yeah. acres is over 100,000 acres. It's going to see a huge difference in the value. And that is including. Whole county and what was changed before. Yes. 
it'll be now it's going to be what we wanted it's going to be equal again as a comparison are we going to be equal to Brad Edwards Reno we don't know I haven't seen their well, we don't have any values yet to compare to because we don't get those till December okay we're kind of good on this okay so Todd's not <laughs> This was a memo that, that was put out to, from the state July 15th. What they said is they do not recommend us implementing these on our own. What they are, what they are requesting, because my first thought is, you know, we have Kimball mapping, and what we would have to do, we would have to get on this right away. Uh, it wouldn't take too long to do the computer part because what they did is they shifted a lot of acres from one soil to the other. So with, in today's world, you can fix that real quick in a computer by doing a list manager type thing. Anything with this soil changes to that soil. But anyway, they don't really recommend like Stafford County going out and doing this on their own. What they would like to do is they would like to set up a series of meetings they would like to use Stafford County in the annex as maybe a central point because we do have most of the acreage. Uh, Barber and Pratt have a lot of this acreage, but a lot of it is in grass. The grass isn't going to change quite as much dollar-wise as our dry crop in the case here. So they would like to use, they want me to say how you guys feel. They, would, they don't want us to implement this for 2021. That's a shock to hear. They would like all the counties to do all this work in 2021 to have it ready for 2022. Well, I guess I'm okay with that. Um, a, it doesn't put Stafford County out, out on the out on the uh, red flag list. Uh, probably we would probably get hounded from not necessarily to people with proper valuation department, but probably the legislation. Because there's other appraisers already that have got other counties have been in trouble for changing soils to raise values. They're gonna blame us, me, you guys, that we implemented this to gain value. It's not what's happening. It's not what happened. This, this was changed by a federal institution. Okay. And then we have to follow accordingly. They want us, everybody that has the car while loop, they want us to do this together for 2022. All counties? That has the soil types. Um, they want, they're going to make the counties do it next summer. They're going to come out to the meetings. They're going to come out and address what's going on. If we can have the more professionals there, the better to explain this again. Um, the advantage to that would be that would be the same year probably that the water would be an issue also in 2022 depending on what happens the rest of this year that could take place in the very same tax year 2022 would be our irrigation situation and our soil type situation and you would address them both in the same year that's what they would like, the state would like us to do, to agree on. So, just to clear, like back when we did in 15, 16, did the car log play, the Cheney watershed deal down there, where we implemented it, and then other counties close to us did. I'm sure at that point the state was saying, we want you to do this mm -hmm. at this time frame, mm -hmm. and then the other counties just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because it wasn't mandated. It was yeah. not mandated. State, so is it mandated now? I'm not sure if they Are would they make it a mandate or if they would. Well, what they could do is that letter that we gave that they gave us of being in compliance. They could actually say that we, if we didn't do this, you could be out of compliance, and they could actually order. You can act. They can actually order through the board of tax appeals a new appraisal to be done, and the county would have to pay for it. I'm, I'm assuming that we'd probably get a couple of nasty letters before then. You would. 
So I'm, what I'm saying, instead of being the first one in line, mm -hmm. maybe we slow walk this a little bit. And do it like the state wants to? Yeah. The state doesn't want us to do it right now. I'd even like, like to walk a little slower than that. <laughs> you mean like 20, 25? Well, that's, right. the first, that's the first opening we have in Annex okay. for the meeting. <laughs> okay. But what I'm saying is every year, every year we can slow play this and put it off. It saves our taxpayers money. Because if we they want to do it in 2021 and we do it in 2021, I mean, if we can hold it off till 2022, that saves all the landowners probably a couple thousand bucks. Well, uh, I see your, I see your point because then where I feel bad about postponing this even a year, to be honest with you, is I told those people down in the Change of Water District that the year they fix this is the year we put it on the correct it. Because they've been paying the higher dollar taxes now for five years. And now I'm going back on my word right? because I would have this and I'm going to wait a year. But we didn't wait for them. We should have. Looking back, maybe we should have. But, but I mean, you want to take one more year? You want to take an additional year of raised taxes out of my pocket to make it you? your word to them feel better? What, what I have to do though, what I have to do though, is I have to follow, most of my job is by statute law and, and, and the authority of the state and so forth. The state actually is saying they're, they're agreeing to postpone this one year to make everybody do it together, um, which is very unusual. Um, it, you, you just can't overlook it, you have to deal with it. You have to, you have to do your job. You have to do my job. I have to do this either this year or next year. Otherwise, it's not fair. It's not even fair to the to the people of Stafford County because what's next? If if the values in St. John should go up thirty percent in one year, but I don't want them to, I'm dictating. I'm dictating way too much there. I'm supposed to follow the law by what the values are doing. And if I'm going to start dictating, instead of it going up 30%, I let it go up 2%. That's too much, that's too much authority for, for a person to dictate how much valuation you're going to get, the sheriff's going to get, anybody's going to get, the schools. You have one person dictating everybody's valuation. So where do you stop? There's a lot of different ways of looking at that. I mean, well, we implemented the Carlisle play, and the guys across the road in Pratt County that haven't been paying that. that but it's you, wrong on their part. We did it right. But you talk to the landowners down there, all they know is they pay a lot more than across the road. And they paid a lot of attorney fees, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I just feel like I can't ignore it. Yeah. I mean, even if another county ignores it, just because they broke into a store doesn't mean I'm going to go break into our store. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do what's right. Whether it raises their values, unfortunately. Um, but we talked about what will happen with the mill money. You know, who knows? I mean, but, but what it's going to be is it's going to be fair now. It's going to, and that's what we wanted, right? Well, the thing is, stinks. You can say that louder. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the thing is, that stinks on this whole thing was that that subtle type was identified, what, 13 years ago? Yeah. And it sat there in limbo for, what, 11? Mm -hmm. Until you got the notice that those values had increased. You did your due diligence and plugged those values in. But what stinks is none of the other counties have. And, 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 to, and remember, Todd, at that time, we didn't know what the values were going to do. We didn't know because we didn't have them yet. We didn't know they was going to take a, uh, a fifth of our county from seventy-six dollars an acre to one hundred sixty-nine, or from seventy-three dollars to two twenty-one. Now that we've been here, we've, we we know what's happening. Now we can we can put the pieces together. We can see what's going to happen. But in fifteen and sixteen, we didn't know that. Well, I sure hope they make them all good. 
Okay, so let me ask you this. By making that statement, do you want a mandatory letter from the state to the commissioner for in each, every county that has county. this soil type? For each county, I would. I think we, we're not going to go out on our own. You'll make it requested. That's what I can well, they can either send us one or they can make us send us one to do it. But, but we don't need to do it. But I mean, I would say that instead of implementing it for next year, I mean, they're saying you can push it back and not implement it to 2021. 2022. That's what they're encouraging doing. us to do. It'll work with yeah. next year. But with even at that, I don't want to do it unless they're all. Yeah, unless they're all going to do it. It's, unless there's some guarantee that all the parents yeah. will do it, I ain't paid to do it. We're not going to do the same thing that happened last time. Unless we do our job right and then we're not there. That's what really caused the uproar. Yeah. And I mean, I can see the people's complaint, I mean, sure. When you own a piece of ground right across the road, they're paying half the taxes or less. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this then. Okay, let me ask you this then. We could still have that same problem. Our Stafford County could still be at 242 an acre. So what are you going to do if Pratt County comes through at 30% cheaper, Edwards County comes in at 40% cheaper, and so forth? Are you requesting a hearing then? Or are we going to request yeah. a hearing? They need to get this. When it's just across the county line, they need to get them closer. As far as evaluations, I mean, if we want to do a hearing, that's fine. But but I mean, you know, those soil type, the soil evaluations that you showed us from like Edwards County and our county, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Why didn't the state fix that? You know, I understand that when you go from east to western Kansas, I mean, the values come down. But I mean, the way it comes off to of Stafford County and then just makes a huge drop in Edwards County, I mean, that's not right. Wasn't well, part of it that there's no teeth into making the appraisers do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, when do you, I'm sure some people's going to get, so some people's going to know this by watching this today. Um, this will be the first part that the public's going to see that this is going to take place. Um, so do you want to have a meeting now or do you want to wait until we get the values for 2021? Um, do you want to have a meeting with at least make an optional and people want to come? It's not going to affect their tax bill yet. When do you want to address and start pushing this? Do you want to take you on the right day? I, I think you get the value. Okay. I just don't think you'll have too much interest to get the because right now it's just hearsay. Yeah, it's just numbers. It's it's just, just be talking session. Okay. So we get the values in December for 2021. We would have seen what we would have done then, and then that we would have a great example, and then start to have maybe having uh, some meetings or something during the winter. So if you had the same soil type. The only thing that's divided in the soil type is is the, the county line. Mm -hmm. Is the production the same? Isn't production figured into this? And as you fall all and all that. Do we have is there more production in Stafford County than what there would be in Edwards County? Over the what they're saying over over the entire county, the cropping practices are, are a little different. And then the cap rates are a little different. Yeah. And that's where our values are high. But in that same little area down there where, you know, Pawnee, Edwards, Pratt, Stafford County all meet, mm -hmm. we are so much higher that that's not acceptable anymore at this point. Do we still want to go talk to Roger and the court before they set the values? To me, that would be more important than like what we talked about doing so that he realizes that before they do set the values. I told you John would leave and go with this a little bit. I think he'd do more good instead of reacting after it's already said, is seeing what we can do. I, I don't know if they do any good, but it should be worth a try. Anything? Yeah, I don't think so. 
make it so they wait till after they make the decision yeah. they try to change it. You're not going to do that. When does that come out in December? You say, I would think sometime October, early November, you know, that would be one of the problems. And have some knowledge of it. Get it know that that is not accurate. Okay. To me, that would make more sense than a group meeting that we don't know. I mean, that's just amazing where 61,000 acres they want to do the value from $102 to $644 jump in one year. And then they're going to turn around the year after that at the state level and be saying, oh, we're trying to keep property taxes down. We need to keep these county commissioners under control. And, and that's why we would get hounded if we did this by ourselves right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. We would just, we would probably. But this can be done for federal, right? Okay, the federal, the the, the National Cooperative Soil Surveys, they're federal. Yeah. They do this. Or the state sets the rates. And then yeah. the state sets the dollar amounts from the soil types. So the states are the ones that's going to mandate us raising the value of the soil way high. That's right. And then they're also going to be the one to tell them how the commissioner to do a bad job of, with property taxes. Well, you're gonna what they're gonna and I don't think the state you know, I'm not you know, the state. <laughs> but property valuation department I don't I don't think they, they don't bad mouth the county commissioners. Property valuation department. Now other other departments might or other legislatures or, or uh, house representatives they might. Yeah. Uh, I, because I know we're having some questions and you guys I don't know if you guys know it on the um, I got a call the other day on the um, the land banks. There's a big question: Do we do the land banks correct? So there's people. Whatever we do here, people are always talking and calling their representatives and what have you. By law, you do doing the land banks correct. If I understand how you've done it, how much influence do you think the legislature has on the valuation? On well, the valuation, I, I would say I would say none. I know. They just talk and, pro and promise lower taxes. When, and, and when they really, unless they change the structure of it, their talks aren't going to be any good. That's right. That's right. You know, a good example on that, uh, Kurt, would be Every, half the state wants the uh, ag use values to go away and put the land on the market value. Well, they, they, they we talked about this a little bit, they're addressing a, an issue, but then part of that issue is our Constitution. That's something the legislature can protect. And, 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 and it would have to, but if they, if they changed our procedures, yeah. we have to open up the Constitution then and re-vote on it. Yeah. But all they talk about is the politics is, is we need to do this, 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 and they have no consequence on, on what what's going to come then. Uh, that's a Western Kansas, Eastern Kansas right there. So that would be the best example on that part. Yeah. Is probably just people promising people saying this, that, and the other, and they can't they have no authority to do it. Right. That's why you need people that are trying to protect the side of and, and to know what the law is. Yeah. And then to know what's going on the whole distance from A to Z. Yep. I, do, I still think that whether it does any good or not, the only thing to try is to still talk to Roger. If we, okay. can, if we can get in. Okay. At least you make your best case effort picking the right people as you might help us. Okay. So right now, when I call Roger back, we need some. So we, you guys want a memo to the commissioners from PPD to mandate this change. Request mandate. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to need to go all the mandate. Yeah. Mandate yeah. there. Yeah. 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 
and, that, and this would be with the chance to appeal the value equity before not the prop owners. Right? You right. want to have a chance to appeal the inequity fund. Okay. But we would like to meet with PVD before they set the values to make it. Closer. Okay. Yeah. We'll do it tomorrow, but we need to do it a couple months before they set it. Okay. So, why did, <coughs> why did they do away with the car wash? Why did they reclassify that year? You mean what they did last time? Because it was It's kind of bigger than that. I think it goes over to Newton. I don't oh, think really? any, I don't think anybody has as much as we do, though. And like I said, the counties that are south of us have a lot of pasture. Yeah. And we have, and, and then when it came up to us, we have a lot of dry crop yeah, exactly. right. farm. You know, my question on that would be: Is it actually even the same soil as Barber County, or has it changed? You know, you know what you am saying. Is this Explain different that than that? That, just, uh, that it's went 90 miles from the same soil if it's only in the soil, but it would make it far. See what the answer is. Write that down, that'll be so. I'll let you write it down. It's written down. I'll let John ask him. Okay. Roger, that didn't make any sense. Yes. I'm going to do a little bit. John's right. No, no, no. He's not good at there. Okay, you guys. I'd claim John, not Roger. You guys have anything for me besides this here? Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Take care. See you, Carl. See you. Josh. Josh. This is basically saying that you don't have the floor. You almost have the other. You need to come in before Carl with all his big <laughs> <laughs> Now they're getting riled up. Oh. <laughs> We're waiting. <now. laughs> You're throwing me up there. Yeah, so. You know, Josh, you better probably might as well sit up there. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> Well, we're here to discuss the governor's executive order um, that was issued. There was two of them issued. One was to delay the start of school time for Labor Day. That was not affirmed by the uh, State Department of Education. Uh, and then this 2059 was issued uh, mandating uh, mitigation procedures uh, in schools. The governor's office says that uh, this cannot be overturned by county commissions because it's not a statewide order. Um, it only applies to schools, which I don't know about that logic. If, if an issue is ordered for closing bars in the state, then that's a statewide order, even though it only applies to bars. Um, but uh, these things in here aren't, aren't bad, but what we're dealing with is uh, health and science and the guidance we're getting is now colliding with the logistics of doing school, and then you have the whole human nature and people's rational and irrational fears. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with here. It mandates masks for all kids, uh, everybody on, on campus, our three year old preschool up through uh, seniors. That conflicts with the guidance we have from the State Department of Education and uh, the Department of Health and Environment that they put together 1,100 pages worth of guidance for us and there it says masks should not be required for elementary age students. Uh, it also mandates six foot social distancing everywhere um, except in the classroom where they're learning. Uh, we couldn't keep them six feet apart in the classroom. We don't have 10 kids in the average classroom. Uh, if we line kids up 
in in the hallway to walk down to get lunch. 25 kids, that's 150 feet long. You can't have kids, six-year-olds spread out 150 feet. So these things are good. We'll try to do our best. Um, uh, checking temperatures before the end of the building, uh, that's going to be, that's a challenge before the end of the building. Uh, we're going to have them lined up out the door trying to check the temperatures. Our plan would be the first hour we just check the temperatures. Aren't the parents going to do that? Though? Well, maybe. maybe. We, we talked about that last week. Yeah, we, we kind of settled on it. It's going to be tough to rely on the parents to do that. And then it sends the message that, okay, this temperature has been taken. But being able to get that information to the teachers of, okay, who needs their temperature checked and didn't get it checked at home, that being able to get that done in a reasonable amount of time to get school started is, is going to be tough. So. Yesterday, what we ended up with was it'd be easier if the teacher just takes it right when they get there. But um, but all of these things uh, again aren't aren't bad things to do necessarily. It's just terribly restrictive. Um, an example is the the masks must be worn. There's an exception for eating, but by the letter of this order, I can't take my mask off to take a drink of water. Um, you could say eating or drinking, I guess, but and requires using hand sanitizer. We have sinks in some rooms. Uh, we'd use a hand sanitizer, it's better to wash the hands. So, uh, did, did the Attorney General say that this, did not, he did not agree with you, that you could opt out? Yeah, the Attorney General said counties can opt out. Uh, there are counties that have done that. Here's a, uh, from Nemaha County, Their commissioners had had, uh, had passed. I don't know what the ultimate authority is on determining whether counties actually can legally overturn it or not, but it would probably be decided sure it's in a court of law. Yeah, it's going to be decided yeah. in a court. Right. And the danger, I guess, the, the concern there is if, if, if the county would overturn this or we don't follow it to the letter of law, is there some liability there? Um, we've got a list of, I don't know, a dozen sure. entities that give us guidance and tell us what we need to be doing. and. Uh, not doing, and you can make the argument that we're not following this guidance to the letter of the law, but we are following this guidance. So, um, you know, we're going to do what we have to do to make sure we're not, we don't have to have kids learning on a computer. We're going to wear masks when we do as best we can with all of this. Um, and tough job. That's a tough Yeah, my God. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I know, did you have a It's just, just proactive to just come out with a letter. I don't know, because like you said, there's a liability if you opt out of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a there's little bit scary. There's even a rumor that if you did something like that, you might lose other funding. Well, and the guidance that I got from KDAG yesterday from their legal was that aren't supposed to opt out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. So there nobody's I'm really like meshing. Yes. I'm not sure why you need to do that. And I'm I'm supposed to follow what KDHG is telling me. <laughs> so it's do you have anything in place? If some, if you had a student test positive, uh, yeah, we're working on those, all those protocols. And we do I think that'd be very important. If we could help you with that, I think mm -hmm. I'd be glad to help you. If you said certain percentage, you got it. This is what's going to happen. 
I would be agreeable with doing something like that if we actually have a problem. You know? yeah. And I'd like to catch it early too. If we yeah. do have a problem. The more distancing, and I know this is the more distancing you can do if you did have a problem, maybe we wouldn't have to send it everybody. Yeah. But just send that. That's kind group. of the block that I've had to. If you try to kind of do kind of contained groups where you know who's in contact with who, it limits the amount that you would have to send home to do the quarantine. It would just be that group because you can pinpoint it easier than if they're traveling throughout the building because then you have to take into account who is in the hallway at whatever time. Right. But I didn't know a kid doesn't get up and go to the high school and go to the bathroom and get a drink of water. It's still a nightmare. Yeah. So, I mean, you pointed out some things on this executive order that wouldn't work. I mean, as far as the kindergartners in a line that's 150 foot long. Right. I mean, what would you guys like to see happen? Well, like, for example, our plan that we're put, putting together would say just distance when feasible and limit interactions between separate stable groups. Like Shim was saying, you know, our first graders, they're going to stay together. If they're going to eat, eat lunch, they're going to stay together and they're not going to be mixing with the other kids. Um, we'll do our best to keep kids apart, you know, walking down the hallway or wherever we're going. But to say, to tell parents that you can expect that your kid won't be within six feet of anybody all day long. Yeah. Yeah. It's disingenuous. I can't tell they folks that. Yeah. And that's where it, I, I just can't tell parents that I'm following these this order uh, as it's written because it's so restrictive. And again, like the masks, our, our plan would be we require them for fifth grade on up and all staff members, and we'll do our best with the, the, the younger grades. For the temperature thing, I sent mm -hmm. information to Nita, but I got information on their doorway scanner mm -hmm. thermometers. Right. So I thought maybe if the parents taking them at home isn't feasible and it's going right. to be an issue of taking a chunk of time to take temps in the rooms for the teachers, we might be able to look into those doorway, door, doorway thermometers. They scan wrists instead of foreheads. So as the kids are coming in, especially if it's cold out and they've got coats on, it's mm -hmm. covering up that skin. So it's right. going to be more accurate reading than the temporal thermometers coming right. in the doorways. They're like $1,200 a piece. Right. And we probably have to get two for each building to do <laughs> elementary and high school. <laughs> but right. if that could fall under the SPARKS funding and it would right. make it easier to get kids in the building, it's supposed to can't scan 20 to 30 kids right. in a minute right. and it gives an audible beep for if it's a good temp or a bad temp whenever they're going through right. so whoever's standing there monitoring it would be able to do it pretty easy because right. it you can hear it you don't have to be looking at the screen right. so you would know if it buzzed and said this kid's got a fever right. Sparks funding pay for that? It should. It should. See, that's the kind of thing that we do need to include. Mm -hmm. yeah. Carol and stuff on that. Yeah, we sent a whole list of stuff like that. I, I sent Anything a whole document to Nita yeah. for that. So. Might as well take the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I I think I gave you yeah. a price for that. <laughs> I know the first paper I yeah. sent you didn't that's have a price on it, but somebody had sent me the price. As far as this executive sure. order, you guys aren't just wanting to throw it out the window. Just need to make a few tweaks. I mean, and within reason. Within reason. And I mean, I wouldn't have a problem. I mean, you can do the best job you can, but I mean, you can't say, like you said, guarantee your kids not to move in six foot. I mean, I guess if we have to change a little bit of word to prove it, I don't have a problem with that. It's not like we're just saying, we're throwing that out the window. I don't think they're <coughs> throwing it out the window or do anything. We thought the state guide, I'm Tracy Becker, I'm the minutes after. Um, we thought the guidance helped us at least manage in person school. And so we've done surveys, I'm sure you guys all too, and we have a lot of parents not wanting their kids to wear masks, I mean, especially the little ones. Um, and then the management piece, even with the sparks funding, it, it's when I'm looking at what we have to purchase to accommodate this, it's, we don't have it. You know, I mean, it's going to be really, really tough without looking at grants and, and going out there. But at least the state guidance let the door stay open and we can manage it because we, 
on that and thought we could do that. Well, I appreciate you too. Just try and be, all you can do is do the best you can. Yeah. You know, I think if this if this is in place and we get to our start date of school, if I don't have a mask for the kid, I can't open it. And we're still waiting on supplies. <clears throat> yeah. Now. yeah how is your can you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for the school. We try one vendor and they're out. Yeah. Yeah. We're back over the room. We're looking at we're looking at for every kid having a cloth mask, one for each day. And it comes in a mesh bag with their name on it. So then at the end of the week, we take that mesh bag and wash it and give it back to them. Can they bring their own? Yeah. We're thinking they would enjoy it more than probably wearing it. Again, not everybody can they're not too proud to let their mask go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, then I think they want to trade it because this looks cooler than mine. Don't trade your mask. I think there's going to be a lot of that. Let me try your mask. Yeah. 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 I think right. it's, <laughs> That's, yeah. It's just hard to keep the kids' hands off of them. So just trying to figure out what's going to be coming down in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you guys going to come up with something where the wording's changed a little bit? Or rephrase it and then go on us to approve Yeah, for example, here's here's our what we're working on just to let parents know, you know, it's gonna be a lot more pages than this with a lot of details of what you do when a kid test positive. But so based on the spread of the virus and working with Shannon, would be low, moderate, or high. Uh, if we're in the low or moderate, we're gonna to try to get kids to school every day if we can. If we get in that high range and the disease spread, then we'll be looking at more remote learning, but we've got on here, you know, for each level, what are we doing with social distancing? What are we doing with masks? Um, what are we doing with uh, this is included here. Uh, hand washing? Temperature We're still doing checks. Temperature Screening. checks. Yeah. So that's all part of our plan. So every aspect that's here is in here. It's just tweaked a little bit. For example, taking the temperatures in class right at 8 o'clock when everybody's there. The teacher can go through and do it in two minutes and we're done with it. Um, uh, or if we have the temperature scanners in the hallway in the building, technically we're not following the, the guidelines because before they're they supposed the to be outside so before they get on the yeah, bus. So <laughs> could, you, could you bring back so, one, once you have that written out letters, bring back, send us what you got. Now I I'd be more interested in improving our own like what when you say your own pod, whatever they whatever well, they come up with. Could I get you to make a copy of that just for mm -hmm. everybody see? Because it's going to be something. I don't want like this spread around. I don't want because right. it's just okay. a draft. Okay, you guys can wait till we find. Oh, we're meeting with our board tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, wait till we get and the final draft. And you guys are going to yeah. follow basically the same plan. Yeah, yeah. all three, all three. Oh yeah, back yeah. right not two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. When you come up with that, could you email that to Nita so she could email the test where we can read through it? You know, to where it ends. This, you know, we have a chance to do it. And uh, I listened in a little bit on the State Board of Education meeting. They were very supportive of the guidance document that Josh referred to. And, and we were looking at, you know, I think we can manage that without it. Um, piece that it just, this, the operations piece was like less than 10% of the whole document. So, yeah. yeah, that was kind of crazy. The rest of it was just helping guide if you have to get a remote learning as well as guiding the teachers or, or hybrid. Yeah. Well, maybe you don't want to say this. Have you decided in your plan what start date? Uh, yeah, the board hasn't approved it, but we're going to postpone one week so we can get teachers in during that. You have an extra week for them to plan. And, and, and you were uh, planning, when was the original? The 20th. Was the 27th? I guess Keisha voted on that one. Mm -hmm. They kind of surveyed people, but not every school had their board meeting yet. Mm -hmm. That's what I put in our notes. In case you just tell everybody that's what you got to do, no matter when you start school. Mm -hmm. They've had it before sometimes. So if you all choose to overturn this, we'll have we will have procedures in place. We're, we're there. I mean, we have them. Run the final draft by, by Shannon for sure. But, uh, 
and if, if you decide it's not in your best interest to return that, we'll live with it and figure it out. I'd like to see you guys come up with your own plan. Yeah. 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 Wouldn't you think you might yeah. have that part? Have more common sense to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe you from who could even approve that. Did you see my if they have yeah. 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 yeah, I think I'd be more inclined to do that. Yeah. To me, right now. Other letters just just one information from another county that had found those and I just thought they looked like they would be a good idea for getting kids in the building quicker and having the temperature already done before they get to the classroom. We actually have a temperature What were you thinking as far as just doing it in the classroom that if the kid tests has a temperature at the doorway? I mean if, kid, if you do it in the classroom then the teacher knows exactly who there's a little not as much this person has to tell this person. I mean, if the kids have a temperature, they could go home. Yeah, it was right to the room. I have a safety. And you're probably just talking about what those are testing for him. So if they get in the classroom, they got 15 minutes for their skin to acclimate before they're in the night, they're not at home. Yeah, he was. He had his uh, another meeting this morning. He has some of his district yeah. leadership team. As well. mm -hmm. And you guys are all kind of on the same page. Yeah. Who's the chairman? Are you pretty much going to start the same time a week later? Or? Well, I'm going to visit with the board about possibly the 24th, which is a Monday. Our original start date for kids wasn't until the 14th. But visiting with teachers, that's only two days for them to have prepared for all the things that's being asked of them. So we're just asking them to get two weeks to prepare right now. So you're saying the teachers need at least a week. Yeah, when Maxwell School starts a week or two, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a change. For instance, if we follow, if we have to follow the governor's order, those teachers need to be having hand washing every single hour, and how they're going to manage that when one class or three per class is 25 kids. How are they going to do that? You know, I mean, there's not a scene for hand sanitizer. It's just going to be how are they going to manage if they need time to collaborate if we have to shut down? What is it going to look like to continue with remote learning? So they just need time to work together and start putting their plans based on the guidance that the board approves. What we can do and I've shared that with the board just as we have to. It's just different than what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the teachers need to be ready to shift to remote learning on a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. might be at school I mean, you have to of, be at home the next day. You guys are kind of expecting that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, if we get a kid in one grade test positive, then we'll probably send them the whole class on for a couple of weeks. And another thing, just to point out from the State Board of Education, we can drive a split by five not in the field chance to listen to it all. Mm -hmm. But basically they were trying to give districts their own ownership of when they start based on what's happening in the counties. You know, some there's a big outbreak in one county, but out here there isn't. And so they would and that's the message I heard is mm -hmm. like that. Just not making a blanket Thank you, sir. Thank you. Legal or illegal comment on it? No. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Shannon, do you have anything else? 
But it's a building there in Hudson that, uh, you know, to keep the integrity of the town looking good, you know, it's, it's an important structure. Yeah. It would be good for Kelly's and Smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Uh, so I'm just throwing that out to you today. Post office, sharks, nest, and then the building and the building. But that could even be the console, you know, that Jesse construction that did the last one to see what would need to be done to the building. Isn't that the electrical? We built the little area inside that was kind of the wire. Yeah. Yeah. We and so there were some electrical issues at that point, but I don't know if that was. Contract. <laughs> that was the actual wiring. We don't, we don't need to get that. Right, right. That's why I said we don't know. We got to fix. Is this right. a one or two story building? One. It's That's just really long. And is it just long, just kind of yeah. open? Yeah, it's in between Wheatland and uh, the bank. They're in that area right in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would like to. Yeah, I'm going to look at it at some point. See if Chad gets green up with his board and then we can go look at it. Yeah, it might be premature for the yeah. bank board. So yeah. Let's know. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. you need to go look at today. Yeah. So he mentioned to me yesterday, so I thought they were doing it today. Yeah. That's good. So. Okay. Well, yeah, it rains all week, like supposed yeah. to, maybe we get next month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. What about the Midwest Energy Bill? Oh, I think they took care of that. Oh. That's what it was. <clears throat> I okay. had brought it up initially uh, within the contract. Um, yeah. We have until November 2020. That uh, the landlord is responsible for all utility bills, and he did acknowledge that when I did 
and oh. I took him with the contract. So um, now we're just looking at actually buying the building or getting the building right. farm down. So, okay. but they'll take care of it until then. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give me a second. Push me around. I make a motion that we approve the July 22nd minutes. Second. <laughs> <laughs> He's still walking me. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and second to approve the minutes for July 22nd. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. Yes, I was slow. I had the minutes written. I heard it. I was slow. We have a. Uh, oh, yeah. Leader Vines quitting. Is it uh, North Sewer or South Sewer? Uh, North. Yeah. Did you talk to Matt? Yes, I talked to Matt. Leader Vines. So, do I need to make a motion that we exec accept this resignation letter mm -hmm. from Lee Devine? Second. <laughs> you made a motion? Yes, I did. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to accept the resignation from the divine effective August 1st. August 1st. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, I talked to Matt, uh, Matt Fisher. Uh, he said that Kale Batman would fill that spot. And I talked to Kale and he said he'd be willing to do it. Who else is on that? Oh, um, Stacey Fisher's husband. Um, Jeff Stone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He's the treasurer. So, but it sounds like they've got to work out Gail's willing to do it, so I would make a motion that we. Did the commissioner? The other ones, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Matt called me and told me Gail would do it, and I called Gail to make sure that you know, he knew what he's getting into. I will make a motion that we appoint Kale Batten to the Township Board. Second. We have a motion and a second to appoint Kale Batman to the Township Board of North, North, North Sewer. Sewer. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, I had some wording on that resolution we passed last week. Philip caught it, so we just need to decide that. Schedule out before Carl Miller next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just um, came because we had a board meeting last night, and uh, as you know, we were trying to get together with the board and the commissioners before COVID kind of hit, and so then we tried contacting again, and we were going to do try to do something over Zoom, and I think you wanted to meet in person. So our board decided last night that um, if you guys would like to meet the evening of the 10th or 11th and just have an open meeting. Um, I'm going to be gone the 8th, and then I'll be getting back the evening of the 11th. So I could meet anywhere from the 7th, or 3rd to 7th or the 12th on, but I can't meet the 10th or 11th. Okay. Um, the 12th or the 12th or the 12th? Um, the 12th? Um, That's a regular meeting. 
I can see um, if that works for everyone. I think somebody said last night the 12 did not work for them, but I can't remember who it was. Um, so let me check on the 12. If the 12 doesn't work, would the 6th work or the 5th? Yep. The 6th six six will not work. Will not work. Not in the evening. Um, no. When you guys get the port thinking all week you know if Dallas ends up beating me then I should probably appoint Dallas and then when Dallas comes the commissioner then he could have he, he would take my spot you know what I mean that's kind of the same way with Kurt instead of Kurt appointing somebody or me appointing somebody that's on there for two years I mean, if we're both off the commission. still on there until January. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you're appointing somebody that then is going to be, basically be, it's a two-year term in the, the board of authority. I don't think it is a board of authority. I don't know. I think it is. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? If me and Kurt are both off on the 4th, then you would, I would think it'd be better to appoint whoever got elected on as our appointees, then they could have say some say so. No, be if, no, I don't think so. No, no, no. Well, I think I think if Bryce becomes the new commissioner on January, if he does, if he wants to change Mitch, then it's his priority to do that. If Dallas would beat you, it'd be his priority to change it on January 14th or whatever. But up until then. I would leave Justin on it. Okay. I was That's say. the date of transition. It's yeah. not on yeah. the fourth of January. I mean, I 14th. thought when you appointed Whatever him for a two is. year, it was a two year term. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I know that the date of transition should be the date that I'm out of office. I don't know how it's set up. Well, it's automatically the three commissioners. Yes. Yeah. And I think the whole board has to vote. I think on the acceptance of the, of the new person. But even Justin, I think the whole board should vote yes or no at that first meeting. Yeah. The seven members is the way it works. But I mean, open meetings, correct? So say. Dallas does beat you, he can still go to those meetings yes, and know can. what's going on. Yeah. Same with Bryce. Yep. Um, yeah, no. I mean, it's not like yeah. you can't no. go. Right. Yeah. Right? Uh, yes, yeah, another kind of that. Yeah. And but it sounds to me like you guys, have, the Port Authority hasn't met for years and years. Right. So when I talked to Carolyn, uh, my information I got from Carolyn where she said they're you know, the commissioners are board members and she is, but then the pointings are a two year deal. So at our first meeting, we're going to have to point all three board members. Right. So I guess it's just our three votes and Carolyn's are the only ones that matter. Yeah. 
because the other three guys aren't initially, on board. I would think you're right. Yeah, I would think you're right initially. Uh, the purpose of the Port Authority meeting, that that's the fifth or sixth? Yes, sixth. Sixth. The sixth. sixth is to select a location. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and it's open, open to the public. Yes. Yes. Yep. They have to be open meetings. Yeah. That. So if I want to be on the agenda to make a comment, I talk to Carolyn. Yes. Or do I even need to be on the agenda? I don't. I don't do those meetings, you guys. I don't know what she does. <laughs> I'd probably talk to I'll, Carolyn. I'll just let her know I'll let let because I want to be able to make a. Yeah. I'm gonna go get married real quick. Can we for recess for just yep. a second? So we'll we'll recess. Session. I just, um, it's time for my second quarterly report oh. for the finances. Right now we have $500 in cash. Yes. What? That's our cash register. Um, that's, that's just our daily, okay. what we keep in our cash register daily is $500. Our CDs are $1,372,523. And 15 cents are um, liquidity accounts, which is just our checking and savings accounts. It's nine million one hundred five dollars or one hundred five thousand two hundred ninety dollars and eighteen cents for a total of ten million four hundred seventy eight thousand three hundred and thirteen dollars and thirty three cents. So, and then I just kind of wanted to give you a little update in this due to about the temper the properties on the tax sale we started out with 22 properties and right now it looks like we're down to 12. and we're waiting on three titles from all from the city of hudson is that title work is done on on all of them but the three properties in hudson okay <coughs> well that well that was as of what last week i think okay Mandy hadn't said anything about those three are included in as well. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. What are we waiting on for the The title or the? We need a title work to know. Okay. So we're okay waiting for the title work to be done. Yes. And then once we get that, when do you think? Probably within a couple weeks, so I'll have it filed and. That's just kind of where we're at. And then I just kind of ran a random report. I didn't bring anything in here because it included these 12, these 12 properties. There's like 54. But half would probably come in and pay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 54 coming up to be three years in the rears. Mm -hmm. But that includes these 12 that are still uh, here. But there's what was it four properties on here that I know they can pay because it's a lot of Ten minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes. And then we 
probably adjourn after that. Yeah. Uh, make a motion that we do five minute executive session discussing on what personnel. Second. Okay. Make a motion second to executive session for non elected personnel. Mary, Mike, and all favor say aye. 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 aye.